This is the Investor Connect podcast program. This is Hall T. Martin. I'm the host of the show, in which we interview angel investors, venture capital, private equity, family offices, and many other investor groups for startups and growth companies. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for joining us. And with that, let's go ahead and bring up our first presenter here today, Ronald. Can you turn on your screen Thanks, and Hall. show Marome and Louise here uh, your presentation and looking forward to their feedback here in a few moments. And those in the audience who have questions, please post them in the chat box. Well, thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to share our company, Titan Tech Medical, today. So my name is Dr. Ronald Berenson. Just by way of background, I'm actually a medical oncologist, Yale and Stanford trained, started several healthcare companies biotech, medical device. A couple of them got public and been very successful on NASDAQ. And about 10 years ago, I went to the University of Washington as an entrepreneur in residence, where I found cool, but as very early stage technology that we've developed into our company, Kaida Tech Medical, which I'm going to tell you about today. And my main focus will be on what I now consider a transformative technology for treating chronic pain with all of the experience, clinical experience we now have with the product. So this is a, a technology that can be used for a lot of different applications. And we started by using it at display as a wound closure product, which I'll briefly talk about. And then later realized that it could be used to treat chronic pain. We're currently raising $3 million in a convertible note that should achieve an exit. The technology is based on these tiny little micro points, which you can see on the, on the right, those really sharp tips. And that's our micro wound closure product, which you'll find out later is identical to our Finipaws product. It's backed by several issues. It's a proof technology, both in the clinic as well as on the market. And our wound closure product has been extremely successful. Just to give you an example, our CVS sales are up 110% this year. Uh, Walgreens has increased the price of the product by 40%, which should yield higher returns for us, higher profits. So we're really excited about where this is going, and we're reintroducing the product on Amazon with our great third-party vendor, who's a major investor in our company. He does over $100 million in Amazon sales. So we're really excited about the micro-point, micro but we've discovered something interesting about our product, and that's its use for treating pain. And this is something that I've suffered with since medical school, chronic pain, so I know it well. It affects a large number of Americans. It's the most common uh, medical disorder, more common than heart disease or diabetes or cancer. And most of us have severe pain for many years. And if we're seeking a convenient and expensive way to treat our pain basically at home so we don't have to go into the hospital or the clinics and have all kinds of procedures done. And consumer products are one potential option. As you might expect, back pain is most common, which is what I have, but neck and, neck and knee pain are common. And actually, I'll tell you later that in this other category is some interesting and very common conditions as well. So consumer products, you think they would be an ideal way to treat the chronic pain. And there's a variety of different products that are available, that are on the market. And I'm sure you're aware of them. Icy Hot, the Salon Pass, the Volterran Gels, the Leave, and Advil. But the challenges with these products is they're short acting. They only treat the severe pain of the chronic pain patient. And the patients don't have options. And so what happens is over 10 million of them are going to end up on narcotics and they can become addicted to them, as you well know. So we discovered, not we, I should say, one of our great investors and we discovered that this same product could be used to treat pain. He had chronic pain. He was a, a surgeon, had to quit because of his chronic pain, a, an orthopedic surgeon, put it on his back when I sent him one, and lo and behold, his pain went away. And then we started... Uh, testing it, and it sure seemed to work on a variety of people. And it opened up this huge market. This is a $600 billion healthcare challenge in the United States. 
It's an ideal product. It's applied just like a bandage. You can see on the right are patch. It's basically a bandage. There aren't any drugs as opposed to almost any other product. It acts within minutes to a couple hours. Uniquely, it can treat severe pain, and very uniquely, it can give pain early for many days. We have been testing it in increasingly a number of conditions. And I must say, so far, it's worked in all the conditions we've tested it in, and you can see a list of those below, and the list continues to grow. So we've conducted 23 patients with severe back pain. We actually tested some patients with a similar product, but didn't have the, they had the micromed staples, but, or micro points, but they, they, they were shorter and that was our placebo. But anyway, we actually used a clinically significant endpoint that the FDA uses for approval. And that's more than a 30% decrease in pain used in a standard line system. And remarkably, in these elderly patients, their average is 68 years old with severe chronic pain, 17 of 18 of them achieved that point and one of five placebo, and that one only had a 31% decrease in pain, so barely met the end point. And there was an average 60% decrease in pain in these patients, well, well above what is considered significant pain, only 30%. And in, in most of the patients, it lasted for a week with just a single patch that was administered to their back. So how does this work? Well, it works in a unique way. It activates what are called receptors, or which are basically the nerve endings that are present underneath the skin. And these receptors, when they're activated, they stimulate nerves, unique specific nerves that shut down pain. And this there's two elements that make this happen. The springs in these and the micropoints. The springs actually, when the product's applied on the skin, the springs force the little tiny micropoints into the layer of the skin, the upper, upper layer where those receptors are to cause this to occur. And we recently received a patent to protect this product and several more are in process. It's made by one of the top U.S. manufacturers of patches and bandages who make our Micromed product currently. And as I said, the, the pain pause is identical. And all it does, just like the Micromed wound closure product, is require simple registration, and then you can sell the product. There's no approval process. So how are we going to sell this? And what are we trying to say about it? Well, the thing that's great about it is it's a single product. And it's the same product as Micromed. So this single product can target millions of customers with all kinds of painful conditions and achieves high margins right now. And as the product rapidly grows, these margins should grow to uh, close to 80%. And consequently, Pain Plus is a scalable business and the margins will rise as the volumes increase. So what is our messaging? Well, I've talked about a lot of this, but basically we're targeting literally the pain point for our patients with chronic pain. And this product opens up a way for these people to receive, to, to obtain or achieve pain relief from literally years and years of suffering, sometimes like long. Well, it leverages the body's natural ability, which is really important to people today, provides relief for a week treats the severe pain of many of us with chronic pain, is easy to apply as a patch, as I said, drug-free, natural, and it's clinically proven. So how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna market this? Well, SEO is very important, and it's really the design here is to drive people to our website who have chronic pain. And then as I'm sure you know about, influencers are always important, and images and videos to promote um, the product, and then also testimonials, which we have a ton of now, are very important as well. So then we move on to search ads, which basically convert traffic from the customers who are looking for solutions for their pain. And you've got to test this, and that's really important to figure out what's optimal for what's called your click rate and your conversion rates. And then you're going to have Facebook or Meta ads, which basically are really important to create 
uh, demand generation that's targeted to groups like a certain age, a certain interest group. And email marketing, that's, that's critical too, because it it's flows patients or consumers to find out about the benefits of the product. And then, and that's very, very important. And one of the things I want to say, I've run, even though I've been CEO of several of these companies, I've designed and run every single clinical study in every company. And I'm a great believer that clinical studies are critical for any product you're going to introduce on the market that's a medical or healthcare product. And this is unique for us because there's, I literally know two or three of the many pain relief products that have been clinically tested. And we've already done back pain. We have a second back pain study going on. We have a knee pain study going on. We're starting a plantar fasciitis study as well. So we're going to have a lot of clinical data that's going to be important to people who want to use this product. So we have different types of products. And one is a single package. And we're going to offer that at a low cost to get people you know, to know our product and see that it works. And then we can get repeat orders with the you know, pricing uh, without the discount. And then we're going to bundle it for, pe for people who want to buy several of these because they are having pain once or twice a month. And with pe people who have more predictable pain, then we're going to have a subscription, particularly patients who have ongoing pain every day. So we're basically using a strategy similar to other pain relief products in which you, you sell these by e-commerce primarily, not retail. And we're launching it in October. We can't do every segment. There's a massive number. So we're going to start with three and do beta testing to optimize our messaging and branding and then start our major campaign in November. And we're already in CVS. We're in discussions with them to put this product on their shelves in 2025. And also, I'll just mention healthcare providers. There's over 40 million people who see chiropractors and they sell products, and we think that's a great target as well. So 40 million Americans have at uh, average use of about three to four purchases per year. That's pretty conservative. And that results in an addressable market of $4 billion in the U.S., each of the individual markets I mentioned earlier, such as back and neck pain, are large, $200 million to over a billion dollars. And we project sales to rise to $70 million in four years, and that's just with a 1.8% penetration rate. So we have a great team. Our board chairman, Ed Truitt, has started a number of consumer products companies that have been successful. Our VP of operations, Paul Liu, has 20 years of experience developing and manufacturing medical devices. We have Laura Adele, who's a really well-known pain management expert, vice chair of pain medicine at one of the top three Southern California healthcare systems. Robert Adele, who's actually discovered this, is, has, had, has a strong background in all kinds of musculoskeletal disorders. And John Kennedy, an esteemed medical MD who has been VP of medical affairs at J&J for over a decade. We expect our sales to rise to over $70 million, and that should be a profit of about $30 million by 2028. So we're now initiating a $3 million raise. It's clearly, it's going to be used for commercialization for the items below. We project that our sales could grow to $6 million in 2025 and get cash flow positive by 2026. So for these kinds of companies, acquisition is the most common route. And there's obviously many, many companies, just about every major drug and many device companies in the consumer as well as medical space for treating pain. And if you calculate based on comps, we should be able to achieve return on investment of 12 times and 24 times in 2027 and 2028 respectively. So I thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks, Ron. Great presentation. Marone, what's your first question? So my first question is, uh, tell us a little bit about the kind of collaborations and partnerships that you're going to need to build in order to drive that growth and get on the mattering map for getting noticed by someone that would 
be an acquisition target for you? Right. Well, importantly is to have somebody who, even though I, you know, my background is primarily medical, obviously I've become more a marketing person as well. And marketing is key to achieve success here. And then that requires ad spend and that requires money. So we're looking and talking to some partners already that could help us with both two things. One is money and the separate is a footprint to be able to enter the markets that I mentioned, not only the e-commerce market, but also the healthcare provider market, which we currently uh, do not have anybody to help us with. So I think that's an important one. And I see that as a, a major market. And so people who sell products, not only e-commerce, but particularly to healthcare practitioners is, is what I'm beginning to focus on and will need support with. Great. And Louise, what's your question? It is. Well, first, Ron, can you lean a little closer so we can see see your pretty face while we're... Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Adjusted yeah. a bit wonderful. Thanks. So when I look at this and I'm you know, wondering how much you're raising, Thing and how far is that going to get you? Or how soon do you think, okay, that's going to get me to X point, but then I'm going to have to be out in the fundraising circuit again. What's that look like? Well, according to our current pro forma, that should lead to us to be profitable at 3 million. But you never know, obviously. It's possible we may need another round, but if so, it would be a small round. We would like to get the 3 million in so we can really start driving the uh, marketing of this product because that requires, you know, large amounts of money. And if we do, we believe that's our return on ad spend should allow us to become profitable by 2026. Rome, you have one last question for us? Sure. You know, you, you mentioned someone in marketing. What are the other key positions that you're going to need to add to your management team in order to take this forward? I believe that the commercial team is the key. I also think that having a COO would be advantageous for us. Many of us may have, we all have some talents and and they're not necessarily, you know, we need, you know, people in each area. And I think one of the areas we have a BP ops, but having a, a COO to oversee all, not just the manufacturing, but all the aspects of the company would be helpful. So I think that's that's the addition I see that that would be needed. We'll st we're a small company. We have four people. You know, we're not going to grow. I've had companies with two hundred, but my last couple have had very few. And you know, the strategy now for companies like us is to outsource, and we have an outstanding marketing team. And uh, manufacturing is one of the top in the world. So it's a small team, but a CEO I think would help. Great. Well, we're at the end of our time, Ron. Thanks for a great presentation. And sure. Marome and Louise, thank you for asking such great questions and a very insightful presentation today on work as a service. Need to have you back to dig <laughs> into that one more as well. Thank you guys in the audience for joining us today. With that, we're going to wrap up and look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a good one. Great. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Hall. Take care. Thanks, guys. Investor Connect helps investors interested in startup funding. In this podcast series, experienced investors share their experience and advice. You can learn more at InvestorConnect.org. Paul T. Martin is the director of Investor Connect, which is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors for early stage funding. All opinions expressed by Hall and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Investor Connect. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions.